A new report from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change is looking at a neglected element of meaningful climate action. And the element that's missing is people doing their part. The landmark study was released earlier this week, and it's calling on people to transform the way they use energy, buildings, and vehicles. For the first time in its history, there is a special focus on how humans impact the environment and ways we can mitigate the situation. The vice chair of the panel's working group says that equity and just transitions can lead to deeper ambitions for accelerated climate action. The report does contain within it lots of assessments of the feasibility of the individual options uh, that Diana especially uh, was taking us through. And it also has an assessment about the feasibility of actually the kind of system changes that would be needed. And just to say, the longer we put off action in terms of, uh, in terms of addressing climate change, the bigger the feasibility challenges will be. And that is a very, very clear message of the report. For more on this story, climate reality leader of the Climate Reality Project, Jeremy Harrison Smith, gave his analysis. I'm going to take the biggest polluting countries um, you know, which includes the U.S., taking action now to stop burning fossil fuels and switch to renewables. So that this has to happen for us to, to keep us under that 1.5 degrees Celsius increase, um, it's, which is going to happen, uh, it's going to make a peak at 2025. So we have to switch right away. The most effective way is to switch to solar and wind. This, the climate report made this clear. Um, there's too much money that's still going to fossil fuels. So removing fossil fuel subsidies um, from government action would, would make a big impact in reducing emissions as well. The good thing is that renewable energy is cheaper. So we need to get our governments to stop subsidizing dirty, expensive energy. So besides doing our part as individuals, we need to focus on electing people that take the crisis seriously and um, make sure that they do something about it. Interesting. And it looks like the report is also calling out uh, systems. Uh, well, it also named colonialism as uh, a situation, uh, particularly a historical and ongoing driver of the climate crisis. So on a systemic level, what it's going to take for us to shift the needle towards a livable planet? That's right. The, the word colonialism finally made it into a report. Um, the scientists are acknowledging that decolonization must be central to the global response to the climate crisis. And, you know, this is significant because we now, you know, uh, climate justice advocates, um, you know, we don't have to waste our time educating the UN on this issue. We can now focus on pushing world leaders toward the right climate solutions that build equity. You know, people in frontline communities are facing the worst effects of the climate crisis. So to be successful in climate action, we need to have inter an intersectional approach, uh, one that focuses on the most impacted communities by empowering and listening to them. So again, those contributing the least to the climate crisis are the most impacted. And so on a systemic level, we need to focus on social justice instead of capitalism and exploitation. You know, indigenous peoples around the world should be empowered and should be given the resources to lead in implementing these climate solutions. And then talking about uh, calling out uh, people to take uh, responsibilities, uh, well, what about uh, developing nations like the United States? Well, what's been done to address this? Yeah, so, um, you know, big, big polluting countries need bit, have, have a big responsibility in so just yesterday here in the United States, um, uh, a group of top uh, 275 scientists sent a letter to uh, President Biden asking, telling him to follow the science and stop fossil fuel burning. Um, you know, this was a pushback against the administration's um, move to increase uh, oil and gas production here in the U.S. as we try to reduce our dependence on Russian fuels. This is a good thing. We shouldn't be uh, addicted to foreign oil, but we need to invest in clean and renewable energy. You know, the U.N. Secretary General Antonio Guterres said the other day when the report came out that investing in new fossil fuels is moral and economic madness. He also said that um, 
climate activists are often depicted as dangerous radicals, but the truly dangerous radicals are the countries that are increasing fossil fuel burn. Costs.